You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Israel, 5776, 2016. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Kisavo. And in our Parsha, we have the blessings, the brachis that we receive when we fulfill the commandments, when we do that which it says in the Torah. And among those brachos, the Torah tells us, I'm going to read to you from chapter 28, verse 11 and 12. Verse says, V'hisir Hashem l'tayva. God will give you goodness. There will be a tremendous amount for you when it comes both to the fruit of the womb and the fruit of your animals, and also to the fruit of your land. On the land that God promised to your great-grandparents that He would give to you. Verse 12, God will open up His good storehouse, Esa Shemaim, the heavens, to give the rain that you need for your land in its correct time. To bless all of that which you do, all of the works of your hand. You will lend to many nations. You will give to all the other nations who need your support. But you will not need to come to them to borrow from them. So we see in the Pashup Shad, the simple understanding of these verses, we see that there are many blessings that come on a simple level, on the most basic level, there are blessings on, in the natural order, which is that the person himself, his animals, his land, they produce what they're meant to produce. Everything is proper in that respect. In the second level, so we have that the rain, which is something which is beyond a little bit, you know, the natural order of things, the rain comes in its right time. It's something which is really far out of our control. As uh, we'll see in the Medrash, it's something which is me'al hateva. It's above nature, the rain coming in its right time. And then the third aspect is that we will be the channel through which good things come into the world. The nations of the world will borrow money from us. They'll see that we are the source of their blessings. The blessings that come into the world, material wealth, material abundance, will come into the world through us. And all of this is true when we fulfill the commandments, when we follow in the path that God has set out before us. Now the Medrash tells us like this, Yiftach Hashem Lecha is Yitzhar Yitzhar quotes our verse that says that God will open up for you His amazing, His good storehouse. Mahu Yiftach. The Medrash wants to understand what does it mean, what, what does the Torah say that God will open up for you? What is the idea of opening up? Amar Rabbi Yonason, Rabbi Yonason says, Shleshta Maftachos B'yodesh Shalak Kodesh Baruch Hu. There are three keys that God holds exclusively. And no other creation God hasn't given over those keys to any messenger, to any angel. These are the three keys. The key of resuscitation of the dead. And the key to allowing someone to give birth who is unable to give birth, who is unable to conceive. And the key of rain. And now the Medjish is going to bring proofs for the fact that you see that each of these three things require a key. And notice the word mafteach, which means a key, is that which opens. The root of the word mafteach is liftach, which means to open. And we're going to see that in each of these three cases, there's some aspect of opening that has to occur. Mafteach shal How do we know that this is true in regards to the revival of the dead? Shanem as the verse says in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 13, which speaks about bringing those those uh, dry bones to life. You shall know that I am Hashem, that I am God, when I open up your graves. So you see that there's an opening that God Himself does. He has the mafteach. He has the key that opens up the door of these graves, brings the dead back to life. Mafteach shelakarus. We find there's also a key in regards to those who have difficulty conceiving. Shinamar, as we find in the verse, in Genesis 29, verse 31, it speaks about Rachel and Rachel, one of the matriarchs of the Jewish people. She was not able to conceive. Hashem had closed off her rechem, her ability to conceive. And then the verse tells us, Vayiftach es rachma. God opened up her ability to conceive, opened up her womb. So we see again, that there's this aspect of a maftach that belongs to God. Hashem Himself, God Himself only, is able to open up that which is closed in these cases. And the third of these keys is the opening, the key that opens the rain. And that's our verse. God shall open up 
his good treasure house, which is a reference to the rains that pour out from the heavens. So as we read this Medrash, we need to think, to try to understand, what is the connection between these three things? What does it mean that they belong to God, that only God can open them up, only God holds the keys to these three things? What is the connection between them? What is the underlying theme that runs through all three of these things? Again, the three things are rain, the rainfall, the ability to conceive when someone is unable to conceive, and the resuscitation of the dead, those who are dead coming back to life. Rabban and Amri, the Medrash continues and tells us that the sages said, G'dayla yiridas g'shamim, great is the concept of the rainfall, she'ishikula k'tchiyas ha'mesim, it's made equal, it is compared to the concept of the resuscitation of the dead, Minayin, how do we know this? Shenemar, the verse in Hosea, in Hosea chapter 6 verse 3, it says, V'yovoy k'geshem lanu k'malkosh yoyre aretz, it will come to us, like the rain, it comes down and it gives sustenance to the land. Maxiv, what does the verse say in the verse right before? Yechayenu miyomayim. The verse refers to the fact that God is going to bring back those who are dead. He's going to bring them back to life. L'fichoch. Therefore, since we see that this verse places these two concepts next to each other, the concept of rain next to the concept of tchiyas hamesim, the resuscitation of the dead. L'fichoch kivauha b'schiyas hamesim sheishkula kinegda. In the second blessing of the Shemayna Esrei, that prayer that we say every single day, three times a day, that second blessing speaks about Tchiyas HaMesim. It speaks about God's amazing power, the Gvura of God, the power of God that He's able to bring the dead back to life. And it's in that very blessing itself that we speak about the fact, we ask God, we say, Mashiv HaRuach, Morid HaGeshem, when it's the appropriate time, when it's the rainy season in Israel, we ask God to bring down the rain, because the rain is connected to the concept of Tchiyas HaMesim, of the resuscitation of the dead. And so this question is a really important question. What is the connection between the resuscitation of the dead and the concept of rain, of getting the rain that we need? How are they connected? We need to understand this because it's something that we say every day, three times a day. We need to understand the concept of this blessing. So in order to begin to understand it, we need to look at what is the essence of the concept of rainfall. What, is, what does it represent in Jewish thought? What does it represent here in this Medrash? And in the Hemshech, in the continuation of the Medrash, and also if you look at the Gemara in Tainus, which also speaks about this idea, Sandav Zion, it's worth checking out over there, but you see that there's a very specific idea, a specific underlying theme which is represented by the rain. Let's see. The Medrash says another concept, which of course, as we've seen so many times, when the Medrashim say another concept, which, is, which follows on the heels of a different concept, that they're always connected. So the verse says, God is going to open up his storehouses. He's going to bring down the rain. Amar Rebbe Eliezer ben Yaakov. Rebbe Eliezer ben Yaakov says an amazing thing. Rebbe Eliezer ben Yaakov says that if let's say you're in the middle of a business deal and you notice that outside it's raining right now, you should know that the business deal that you're involved in is going to see blessings. When you hear rain, when you hear that pitter-patter of rain, it's a sign that indicates the fact that God is going to bring blessings, or God is bringing blessings into the world. Shenemar, as our verse says, The verse refers to the fact that God is going to open up the heavens in order to bring the rain of the earth in its right time. And to bless all of the works of your hands. So you see, it's not just that what you're doing out in the field that God is going to give blessings on when it rains, but it's not... I'll call my It's going to be on all of the works of your hands, all of the things that you're involved in, all the masa umata, and all of the business. So we see very clearly here that the concept of rain represents and corresponds and is a dogma to the idea of parnasa, of a person's livelihood. And in fact, if you look at the second blessing, which we say every day, three times a day, there's an indication to that as well in that blessing itself. It says, Ata gibor lelom Hashem. It says, God, you are so mighty, you're so powerful. You bring the dead to life, you abundantly save. Next thing we say, in its appropriate time, in the, in the winter months, we say, We ask God to bring down the rain. The next words are, God gives sustenance with kindness. God gives parnasa, it's referring to, the livelihood of the person. God gives with kindness, and God also brings the dead to life. So you see that when we speak about the concept of rain, we're really speaking about the concept of parnasa. 
We're speaking about the idea of livelihood, of God providing sustenance, not just bringing down rain, but actually causing all those things that are in the ground to grow and thereby provide man with his needs, with his physical needs, with his sustenance. But still, we need to understand what is the connection between God providing man with sustenance and God bringing the dead to life. Okay, I mean, we could, on, on a simple level, we could say, look, when someone's dead, God brings them back to life, so God is giving them sustenance. But they just seem to be very distant from each other. They don't seem to be the same thing. Someone who's alive and is given sustenance, so he hasn't died, he hasn't been brought back to life. He's living, and he's getting continued sustenance. He's, he's being sustained. It's not the same thing as when someone is dead and brought back to life. It doesn't seem to be the same thing. It doesn't seem to be the same concept. What is the idea? Why is the Medrash placing them? And why, why do we place them together in that same blessing, in the second blessing of the Shemon Esrei? Now I want to read to you the rest of the Medrash. There are a few more small pieces in the Medrash. Each little thing is a little hint to the idea here that's underlying the entire theme of this Medrash, the entire theme of the concept of rain, and of the concept of Tchiyas HaMesim, of the revival of the dead. Medrash continues like this, Rabbanan Amri, Af Hadogim Esporchim. The sages say that not only is it true that a person's things in the, the things in a person's field, they get sustenance, not only is it true that it spills over into all of a person's actions, all of his masa umat, and all of his business dealings, but even the fish themselves, the fish in the sea, they receive blessings. Amr Abbasenu, the, the sages said in a, in a story to illustrate this idea, one time they caught a fish in the port of Akko. The time that they, they caught this fish was before the main rains had fallen. When they looked at the size of the fish, they thought for sure it weighed 300 litrin, a certain measurement. It turned out, even though it looked much bigger, the actual weight was only 200. A certain elderly person said to them, a certain wise person said to them, If you would have waited until the rain had already fallen much more, so you would have found that this fish was indeed, it would have weighed more. And indeed this is what happened as the story progressed. After the rain had fallen, they caught another fish. And when they looked at it, they thought that it was only going to weigh about 200 litrin. And it turned out that it weighed 300 you see from this story that even the fish themselves, which we wouldn't think that they would be affected by the rainfall, they also are affected by the rainfall. They also receive blessings as a result of the rain falling. So the rain itself is really a, an indication, an indicator of the fact that there are blessings coming into the world. Those blessings manifest in a person's business and they also manifest in the physical realm when it comes to the fish themselves, even the fish that people are going to catch, they become larger in line with the blessings that are coming to the world that we see from the rain. So when we look at this part, I want to understand why are we pointing out the concept that, it, that there's blessing that's manifest everywhere, specifically in regards to the fish. What is the Medrash's message with the fish? Why, what's the depth of that idea? Last piece in the Medrash, it says like this, Dover Acher, one more concept. Gedoi Keshamim. Like we said, the concept of rain is, is very important, very significant. We see that it's equal, it's made equal, it's placed on the same scales as the concept of revival of the dead. Ketzad. How is this? We see that in referring to both of these concepts, both rain and the revival of the dead, the Torah uses the word psicha, which means to open. In both of these, it uses the word yad, which means a hand. There's a concept of song which is used in reference to both the concept of rain and the concept of the revival of the dead. We find in regards to as we quoted earlier, the verse in Ezekiel chapter 37, it speaks about the opening. God opens the graves of the dead. We read as Kishon Ksiv, Yiftach Hashem Lecha. Our verse it uses the word that Hashem is going to open. So we see that they're, they're compared, they're similar, they're placed on the same level. In regards to the revival of the dead, it says, It speaks of the Hashem's hand. We read In regards to the falling of the rain, it says, God opens His hand. It's referring again to Parnassah, to livelihood, and it speaks of God opening His hand and providing for every living creature. So we see that there's a hand in both places. 
It speaks of those who are dead getting up and singing. And in regards to the falling of the rain, the verse says, Yisrael af Yashiru, it's a verse in Psalms, chapter 65, verse 14, speaking of the growing wheat, that the wheat as they grow and they come out and, and their stalks waving in the wind, there's a certain song, if you listen to them wave, as they wave in the wind, there's a sound and there's a song. So we see that there's a song in regards to both rain and also in regards to Tchias Amesim, the revival of the dead. So here I want to understand what is the symbolism of the hand what is the symbolism of the opening that we're speaking about here? And what is the symbolism of the song? And all three of these items are specifically in regards to rain and the revival of the dead. So to start to understand this, I want to come back to the previous question that we asked. What was the significance of the concept of the fish? That we said that our sages say that when the rain falls, so the fish also receive blessings. The fish themselves also become bigger. What is the concept of fish? And how does it fit in to what we're speaking about over here? And I want to share with you a very deep idea. And that is that the fish, we see that there are a few different places where the fish, the concept of the fish appears in, in Jewish thought. One place that we see it in the Torah itself is in the blessings that Yaakov, that Jacob gives to the two sons of Yosef at Tzadik, to Joseph's sons Ephraim and Menashe. He says, HaMalach HaGoyel Oisi Mikolro the angel that protects me from all evil, Yevorech Arim, he should bless the children, and call upon them my name and the name of my fathers, Avram, Yitzchak, Abraham, and Isaac, and they should be like fish, they should multiply like fish in the midst of the land. And why is the concept of fish, what is the idea of fish, why are they the semel, the th- that which represents the concept of Perea Verivia, of multiplying. We know that the Torah, at the beginning of in Bracious, God gives a special blessing to the fish that they should have Perea Verivia, that they should multiply and become many. But what is the significance? Why indeed is the fish that which represents this Perea Verivia, this multiplication? And the question becomes slightly more challenging when we try to understand it in light of the fact that there's a month of the year, which is the month of Adar, which is the month of Purim, which is the month of that amazing miracle of an Ahafechu, everything is turned upside down. That month of the year, the Mazel, each month has its own special zodiac sign. The Mazel, the zodiac sign of Adar, of the month of Purim, is the fish. What's the significance of the fish? Why is it specifically connected to the month of Adar and to the holiday of Purim? And I was thinking about this, and what occurred to me is that besides for the classic answer, which is that since the fish is underneath the water, no one can see them, they're in a place where there's no ayin hara, that the, the negative evil eye that could be brought about, if somebody looks at something and he's jealous of it, could cause damage to it, that doesn't apply to fish because they're underneath the water. That's the classic answer. But I was thinking about a different possible answer, and that is that fish are in a place. When we look at it from our human perspective, water is a place that there is not possible to be life. A human being cannot live underneath the water. So water represents a place of death, at least from our perspective. Of course, we know fish are able to to live there because they have special breathing apparatus, so to speak. They have gills which allow them to breathe underwater. But from our perspective, from the simple perspective, from the pashup shot, so to speak, water is a place of death. And yet fish, not only do they live there, but they're able to succeed there. And they multiply and they have blessings. And so I see the fish as representing a place, representing a creature, which Hashem says, I want you to have blessing, even a place where it seems that blessing can't be chal, it can't take effect, because it's a place that seems to be death. Nevertheless, I want you to see that there's going to be blessing in that place. And it occurred to me that when it comes to a person's parnasa, when it comes on a simple level, when a person takes some seeds and plants them in the ground, so it seems like they're just going to be thrown out. person threw them out. They're garbage. They're going to decompose. They're going to disappear. Yet what happens? It starts to decompose on the surface. It looks like it's gone. But then it starts to grow. The rain comes. It starts to grow. So rain represents that which causes something to grow, which you would have thought had no chance to live. Even if you look at a person's parnasa, a person's livelihood, a person invests his time or his money. Like they say, you know, you can't make money unless you spend money. 
person gives away his money, he spends all this money to buy all this merchandise. Then he comes to a place and he wants to sell it. It seems like he's given away all of his money. It seems like he's done the opposite of what he intends. He wants to make money. Why is he giving away his money? But like we said, you have to give away. You have to enter into a place of death, so to speak. You have to enter into a place where it seems like you can't survive. You have to give up your money in order to be able to make money. Now the starkest example of this is death. Person goes, person passes on from the world, they go to the next world. Their body is placed into the ground. It seems like that's the end. It seems like there's nothing after that. But Hashem says, Yiftach Hashem. God says, I'm going to open up the graves. This is not the end. It's just the beginning. And it's the beginning of something which lasts forever. After Tchiyas HaMesim, after the revival of the dead, people will then live for all time. So the amazing reality is that that which seems like the greatest death, death itself, that which seems like the greatest end, is not really the end, it's really the beginning. And so that's the common denominator between the concept of rain, which brings that which seems dead to life, and the concept of Tchiyas HaMesim, that which is honestly completely dead. Hashem is going to bring that back to life. And, and the very sustenance of the human being, it seems impossible. It seems like, you know, a person will never ever be able to have all of his needs met, and yet Hashem provides him with all of his needs. And I think that that's the idea here of these three concepts. The three are psicha, opening, yad, hand, the concept of song. What's the connection or what is the idea here in this context? And I think the idea is that if you look at a hand, so a hand has the ability to be open or closed. And when a hand is closed, so you can't tell if there's anything inside of it. If a person, if a child will hold out their hand and say, Daddy, look what's inside of my hand. You, what, guess what's inside of my hand. You can't know. Maybe there's something inside. Maybe there's not. Well, if something's sticking out, so you know that there's something in there. But a hand is something which can be closed and you can't tell if something's in there. It looks like there's nothing there. Or it could be that there's nothing there. There's a psicha when Hashem opens. The idea of opening is, is a reveal. There's a reveal. Hashem reveals that that which looks like there's nothing there or that it's the end, that, that the, the things are hidden. It looks like there's nothing going on there. That's really the beginning. It looks like the, the fish, like we said, the fish in a place where it looks like you can't live there. Hashem shows there's blessings there as well. There's a hand, it's closed, it looks like there's nothing there. Hashem opens it and shows you that no, that that which looked like there was nothing there, there is something there. There's a reveal. And the song, the concept of song, for example, like we see when the Jewish people come to the other side of the Yam Suf after the Egyptians have been swallowed up by the waves, they sing. Because the concept of song applies when something which seemed impossible, a place of death, a place of destruction, they walk through the water, and it's not a coincidence that they walk through the water, like the fish. A place which seemed like certain death, if it turns out at the other end, not only is it a place of death, but it's a place of birth, that's where song is. Song is that which we do when we see, it's, it's almost like at the punchline of the joke, when you see that the opposite of what you thought it was going to be, it looked like certain death, but it ended up being the beginning of a new life. That's where we sing, right? We speak about the fact that when Mashiach, when the Messiah comes, Shir Lashem Shir Chadash, we're going to sing a new song. And the song is something which represents this concept, the concept of where it seemed that there would be death, where it seemed the opposite of life, where it seemed the farthest reaches, the farthest depths, the, the farthest place from God, that that's where Hashem was found. And indeed, Hashem opens His hand, as it were, and He shows, He reveals that not only is it not death, but it's the beginning of life. That's where we sing. I want to bless you and please bless me back. That Hashem should help us to see that the places of darkness, the, the challenges in our life, the places where it seems like we've lost it, we've lost that life, the places where it seems that we're disconnected, Hashem should help us to see that those are actually places which are the beginnings of new life. That the challenges that we face off with, the places where it seems like we're not going to make it, we're not going to have a relationship with Hashem, those places are the places where we call out from the darkest depths and we ask Hashem to bring us into the light. May Hashem help us to see the opening of His hand. May Hashem help us to be able to sing at that point in time when we experience that the darkness was really just the beginning of the light. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.